The Word for World is Forest by Ursula K. Le Guin, 1976. First printed in the anthology Again Dangerous Visions. Edited by Harlan Ellison, 1972. This short novel is set in the Hainish cycle, or the Hainish universe. The Hains are the first humans who populated this area of the galaxy. Earth is one of the planets that they populated. After this initial colonization, there was no travel between planets. They soon forgot the Hain. As space travel came back, so did their knowledge of other worlds, of other humans, humans who had evolved quite differently than they had. Each of Le Guin's early science fiction novels focus on a world in this Hainish universe. The word for world is forest focuses on a military logging colony set up on the planet of Athshi by the people of Terra, or Earth. Terra no longer supports trees due to ecological damage. Wood becomes a valued commodity from other planets. The logging colony has enslaved the non-aggressive native Athsians, fellow descendants of the Hain. They are green, with fur, standing about one meter or one yard tall. The wife of one of the Ashians is raped and killed by a Terran military captain. Inside Selver, something breaks, and he attacks the captain. The captain viciously beats him, until another Terran steps in and saves Selver's life. The Ashians don't understand how Terrans cannot respect the sanctity of life. Misunderstandings and the aggressiveness of the Terrans tear apart this once peaceful ecology and world. Representatives of the League of Worlds arrive and are shocked by the slavery. The colony had been separated from Terran by years, the years that takes to travel between worlds. But now they're introduced to the Ansible, a communication device with no lag in time. They are now responsible to the League of Worlds and to Terra in real time. What will be the response of the League of Worlds? And will the murdering Terran military captain obey or continue to terrorize the Ashians? Will the Ashians rise up? Now the setting, the circumstances, and the plot may sound familiar. Just replace the Astheans with very tall blue aliens. Add one protagonist in a wheelchair with the ability to jack into an avatar of that alien race. But I'm going to put that similarity aside for now. Let's take a look at the two introductions in the book. I think it's going to shed light on what this book really is about. From the introduction by Ken McLeod. Written in the glare of the United States War on Indochina, and first published as a separate book in that war's dire aftermath, The Word for World is Forest, is a reflection on invasion, exploitation, and oppression, and on the necessity and cost of resistance. Though short, the novel is far from slight. It brings into sharp focus several of its author's enduring concerns and draws on the same intellectual resources that illuminate her wider work notably anthropology, anarchism, feminism, and Taoism. Characteristically of all Le Guin's writing, it embodies the stubborn virtue of seeing with both eyes, in depth and in color, without looking away from or ignoring uncomfortable truths. Remembering that this short novel was first printed in Again Dangerous Visions, edited by Harlan Ellison, MacLeod says, Ursula Le Guin may be the SF writer most respected by the literary mainstream, the most studied academically. Her work set text in countless courses. She remains subversive. And her work, dangerous reading, because it changes the reader and makes them look at the real world in a different light. This novel's continuing relevance is a rebuke to our complacency. 
Ken McLeod. We also have an author's introduction in this SF Masterworks edition. In this tale, which began as a pure pursuit of freedom and the dream, I succumbed, in part, to the lure of the pulpit. I wrote The Little Green Men, its first editor Harlan Ellison retitled it, with my rather morose permission, in the winter of 1968, during a year's stay in London. All through the 60s, in my home city in the States, I had been helping organize and participating in non-violent demonstrations, first against atomic bomb testing, then against the pursuance of the war in Vietnam. There was a peace movement, and I was in it, and so had a channel of action and expression for my ethical and political opinions, totally separate from my writing. In England that year, a guest and a foreigner, I had no such outlet. And 1968 was a bitter year for those who opposed the war. The lies and hypocrisies redoubled, so did the killing. Moreover, it was becoming clear that the ethic which approved the defoliation of forests and grain lands and the murder of non-combatants in the name of peace was only a corollary of the ethic which permits the despoliation of natural resources for private profit or the GNP and the murder of the creatures of the earth in the name of man. The victory of the ethic of exploitation in all societies seemed as inevitable as it was disastrous. American involvement in Vietnam is now past. The immediately intolerable pressures have shifted to other areas, and so the moralizing aspects of the story are now plainly visible. These I regret, but I do not disclaim them either. The work must stand or fall on whatever elements it preserved of the yearning that underlies all specific outrage and protest, whatever tentative outreaching it made amidst anger and despair towards justice, or wit, or grace, or liberty. I think a major theme in Le Guin's work is overcoming oppression. Both the word for world is forest and avatar are expressions of overcoming oppression. One is about imperialism or colonialism. The other, capitalism and big business. Le Guin is subversive. This novel is sharp and has a bite. I give it 8 out of 10. Recommended. So have you read The Word for World is Forest? Do you think Avatar owes a lot to this novel? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, keep reading.